Recently, I have completed my 12 years education and I have decided to become a professional Dai. Mashallah. In short, I have decided to be like Sheikh Ahmad Didat and you. Please guide me about such a proper path so that I can also earn enough to carry my Dawa mission throughout my life. My parents are blessed enough to send me abroad for study. Should I go to Madina University or somewhere in Makkah or just study in Pakistan? Should I go to some madrasa or some university? Should I first become a scholar of Islam and then die or can directly jump into Dawa? A similar question is asked by Naseem from Bangladesh. I want to educate my son in Islamic education. Please tell me the names of some Islamic educational institutions inside and outside Bangladesh from which my child can acquire knowledge of Quran and Hadith. I want my child to acquire the highest knowledge of Islam in the light of Quran and Sunnah. As far as these questions asked is concerned, in the first question, the first part of the question was that how can that I want to become a professional Dai, so how can I earn my living so that I can continue doing my profession of Dawa. And this question was asked to me during the last session, I'll just repeat in brief. The best is that if your parents are wealthy and they can support you and they can take care of your day-to-day -day, day -day expenses and you continue doing Dawa and you, and you make your life waqf for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the best. If your parents are well off and they do it, it's the best. Number two, the second best can be that if Allah has given you that acumen and, and that knack of doing business and being successful in business, you can spend a small portion of your time, maybe 5% of your time in doing some business as a small part time, which can get you sufficient money so that you can lead your life. As far as I'm concerned, mashallah, in the initial stages, my, my parents supported me fully, completely financially. They said, you need not do any profession and Alhamdulillah, my parents and my brother. And later on, I started doing my own business and I used to spend about a few hours a week, not during office time, during, you know, normally people have one or two days off in a week, in a one day off, a few hours in a week, maybe one or two days in a month. And that time I used to do business and in that business, Allah blessed me so much that I started earning more than my parents, more than my brother and Alhamdulillah, I have to utilize a small portion of it for my family and the major portion has to give in charity. So first is your family, if they can support you, number one. Second is you can do a business if Allah has given the acumen. And the best example is of, of the Sahaba, Abdurrahman bin Auf. May Allah be pleased with him. People used to say that whatever we touched, it became gold. When, when they migrated the Sahabas to Medina and when the Ansar were willing to help them, he said, no, show me the place to the market. He went to the market and came back with enough wealth because Allah had given him that gift. Number three, as I mentioned earlier, is that the rich Muslims can make a fund for supporting the Daids, the Duats, so that they need not worry about the living and they support them so the rich people get the sawab of the Dawa which the Daids are doing without the sawab of the Dai reducing. Number four, you can join an organization you can join an Islamic organization which is of your school of thought, which is according to Quran and Sunnah. You join them and if they can pay you a salary, even it may be less than the others, you are doing both together. You are doing Dawah in the organization and even getting a salary. And the last resort, the fifth is, you can join a halal company. It may not be an Islamic Dawah organization. It may be a Muslim company, not related with Dawah. It can be a non-Muslim company as long as it is halal. See to it that that company has two days off in a week. The timing the less, it is as per the government rules, so that you have about 50% of your time more than that for doing dawah. These are the various options that will take care of your day-to-day -day living, inshallah. As far as the second question is concerned, that which university should you join? Should you go abroad, Medina, Makkah, or Pakistan, or the lady who has asked in Bangladesh, which is the university that I would recommend? According, uh, according to my knowledge, one of the best universities that I feel that can give the knowledge of Quran and Sahih Hadith, it is Jamiat al-Imam. It is Imam bin Muhammad al Saud University. Imam Muhammad bin Saud University, which is in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. But unfortunately, this university is mainly for Saudis. 
only a very small percentage, maybe two, three, or four percent. Initially, it was one percent. Now, I think it's four percent of the foreigners are allowed. So, very small portion allowed. So, to get admission, you know, like in India, I think the quota is one a year. So, thousands of people apply. Only one they select from the thousands applying. Similarly, from each country, they have a very minute number of people. But Alhamdulillah, when I approached uh, the dean director at that time. I, re I said that why don't you allow all our students who have passed from Islamic International School to join the university and Alhamdulillah 14 had passed, 7 wanted to take the mainstream, become doctors, engineers, 7 wanted to take the Dawa field and all 7 of them Alhamdulillah got admission into the Jamaat Imam University in Riyadh. The other good university, it is the Islamic University of Medina, that's in Saudi Arabia. This university, one of its purpose was to give admission even to foreigners. So 50% of the students are Saudis, 50% are foreigners. So they have a quota maybe of 40 or 50 students from, from India each year, a uh, bigger number from Pakistan. They have a quota from Bangladesh. Here is, is much easier as compared to getting into Jamit Imam. But yet it's difficult. There are hundreds and thousands applying and yet the quota is limited. So according to me, the other good university is the Islamic University of Medina. The other good is also the Ummul Qura from Makkah. For a foreigner, I would I would prefer that for a foreigner, he can go to Islamic University of Medina. And, but only going to the university is not sufficient. Besides studying in the university, you should also attend the durus of the scholars. There are many scholars giving durus, giving uh, lectures, taking sessions in, in Medina, in the Prophet's mosque, outside, even in, um, in Mecca, and even in Riyadh. The Kubar Ulma, there are many great scholars in Riyadh and even in Riyadh, UK. So the one of the things is besides going to university, I would also recommend that you attend the durus of the great scholars. This will help you more than studying in university. So doing simultaneously, it is, it is the best. So I recommend that you can go to any, any of these universities.